truths, uh, go to the segments I want to see. And when I watch it that way, I can appreciate the show a little bit better as opposed to just sitting on the couch for three hours just waiting for commercial after commercial after commercial. Yeah, I definitely do. I see a lot of people that definitely that do that, people who go on and watch SmackDown, I mean, who watch Raw, you know, on the replay. Uh, on the replay and on the rebound, they go ahead and DVR it because, like, once I said, I said all the time, you can't beat the summertime, man. The summertime is, oh, le- le- is legit. People love the sun. They love, you know, hanging out. They love doing uh, what they do with the sun. So it's one of those type things, uh, which is good TV. Uh, you know, but WWE also was in Texas again tonight, man, for WWE SmackDown. And SmackDown started off with you had Dolph Ziggler, you had Kevin Owens, you had Elias, you had Drew McIntyre, you had uh, Shane McMahon. And everyone was in there talking about, you know, what they're going to do. Shane was asked, was he scared of The Undertaker? And we know we got extreme rules coming up uh, here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but what came out of that was that Dolph Ziggler and Kevin Owens would take on Heavy Machinery, and the winner of that match would go on and take on, would be thrown into the triple tra- match for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. Uh, then we moved on to the first match of the night. Well, man, Big E right now, I don't care what anybody says, Big E is a superstar. Not only is he a superstar on social media, if you follow him on Twitter, but Big E is a superstar uh, in the ring as well. Even the match tonight with Daniel Bryan, he showed, you know, showed his charisma, showed his enthusiasm. Uh, I like Big E, man. I think Big E deserves a title run. I really do. I think it's um, I think it's time. Uh, I think that um, he definitely checked off all of the boxes that you could check off for what you want. The only thing is, how are you going to do this as long as he's with the New Day? You know, unless he goes to the other roster and makes a run for the title. So, I mean, I think he's worthy of it. I think he's proven himself. Um, I think he's money on the mic, and he's gold on social media, which is, you know, great. And uh, we just got to see what happens next. Yeah, definitely see what happens next. But none, back to the match. Daniel Bryan gets a win uh, with the help of Rowan uh, in this match. Daniel Bryan with the roll-up and gets a pin over Big E Langston. But I think B, I think I agree with you. Big E, you know, Kofi Kingston is doing well as the WWE champion. But I'd love to see him put it on Big E because Big E has the charisma to and, and stuff to move on. Uh, then we go on to, man, we go on to, you know, your man. And I, your man, R-Truth, R-Truth is backstage with Kaylee. Uh. Kaylee, and he talk about him losing the 24-7 title, and they don't want to see – he didn't want to see the fact that he lost a 24-7 title yesterday to Drake Maverick before he went on – Drake Maverick went on his honeymoon. Man, I think this is the best thing that WWE's doing. We talk about it all the time, you know, how they need to start doing things outside of the arena, uh, things in the streets, things in the supermarket, a la uh, Booker T and Stone Cold Steve Austin. If you go back to a la Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock, when Rock uh, Austin threw the title in a kind of the title. The Rudy in, Poo Bridge. Yeah, Rudy to, in Rudy Poo Bridge. But when they do things outside and when you get vignettes outside, I think it brings the wrestling fans in some more. Man, but this twenty seven, the 24-7 title has been gold since R-Truth had it. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, you know, sometimes some people, I, I remember hearing an old timer say, I can't remember who it was, he was like, the, the, the belts are representative of what the company wants you to represent, but if the people are behind you, sometimes you don't even need a belt, you know? And it's crazy because in his almost 20 year career, you know, our truth is NWA title, uh, he had the U.S. title, never got a shot at the, uh, the big boy, the big boy belt, you know, but um, he's doing big boy things with a little green and gold belt. And when I, like I said, when I fast forward, I make sure I do not skip the R-Truth segment because his segments are entertaining. I'm glad they let the guys work out, you know, get their, get their good stuff in uh, on the, um, you know, on the matches and and they they got some, some action in there now instead of just running backstage. But this is the type of thing that can go anywhere. And the fact that they keep some of it on their social media portals and then bring it over to the television uh, viewing audience, I think it's great to stay engaged with, you know, everything that's going on. All because this guy, you know, has turned something into he, – he made something out of nothing. Yeah, it makes you want it makes you want to stick to and stay glued to your social media. 
you know, if you're a WWE fan, make sure you stay glued to your social media because you never know what's going to happen. You know, man, tonight I really thought that I would see our truth somewhere sneak into Renee Michelle's, uh, uh, Renee Michelle, uh, Renee and Dirk, uh, Drake, Drake Mavericks, uh, Drake Mavericks, lo- uh, hotel room, locker room, or uh, wherever they have their honeymoon at, and that, that Drake would pull back the sheets and there's our truth right there. And next thing you know, a, ref- ref- a referee pops out of nowhere and our truth pins the man, uh, in his bed on his honeymoon, you know, something like that. <laughs> where, where you get a laugh and then our troop busts out and runs out, you know. Yeah, well, they, well, they, well, listen, that's not too far fetched. They got to get to where they going first, but like that stuff that that's comedy and entertainment goal altogether. Yeah, well, that's definitely entertainment goal there. But it, you know, our truth was disappointed in fact that he lost the twenty four seven title. So I will be interested to see where WWE goes from here uh, with the twenty seven twenty four seven championship uh, because our truth, man. He's taking whatever he got and he's turning it into uh, TV magic. I mean, even with the raps off, uh, you know, when he goes to Instagram and, and start rapping and when he goes to, you know, all these things, our truth is doing a great thing because uh, he's coming for, as he said tonight, I'm coming for the 7-Eleven European Championship. The 7-Eleven <laughs> European Championship. If you get it, ladies and gentlemen, 7-Eleven is open 24 hours. So that's what our truth is coming for the 7-Eleven 24, uh, 7-Eleven European Championship. Yo, then we moved on, man, to Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. And Alexa Bliss said Nikki Cross uh, will be doing a special moment of bliss tonight. And it was good for Nikki Cross to show her personality uh, and, and, and speak very well. Uh, as she did on the stage, and she ended up taking on Bailey, uh, and Bailey's your SmackDown's champion. To me, it seems like Bailey's missing something, man. They want to get her over, but it seems like she's missing something. And, you know, and I don't know if it's that person that she can't <laughs> wrestle with. And I, I'm not gonna say it's Sasha Banks, but she's missing. She's Bailey is missing something, man. <laughs> From my vantage point, Bailey ain't missing nothing. I'm about to change her name to Backyard Bailey. Back- <laughs> <laughs> Because she's bringing them cakes to the ring. <laughs> hey, that's all the working out she's been doing. But, but you know, she's putting in work as a WWE SmackDown Women's Champion. Uh, tonight she took on Nikki Cross. She ended up getting the win over Nikki Cross. And we know that at Extreme Rules she would end up taking on Alexa Bliss. If you go back a couple years ago, she took on Alexa Bliss at Extreme Rules in a kendo stick, or I guess it was a stick on a pole match. Whatever case it may be, uh, you know, there was a kendo stick involved. So we saw Alexa Bliss, uh, Alexa Bliss uh, win that one. What Bailey would take on Alexa Bliss, I like, but she like I said the work she's doing is well. But to me, I think she's just still missing, uh, missing something uh, in the ring, and, and maybe it's the mic skills. I think they should keep her in. Sasha Banks separated for a long time. When Sasha Banks, if and when Sasha Banks does return to the WWE, which I think she does return uh, re- rather sooner uh, than later, uh, we might see her. We might see her as soon as Extreme Rules, or we might even check her out uh, at SummerSlam. But nonetheless, I do think Sasha Banks returned to the ring. But I think Bailey just is missing something. Maybe she's just missing a dance partner. You know, somebody to uh, a. a equivalent dance partner to what she needs. And the reason I say that because we had when Charlotte had the SmackDown title, uh you had Charlotte and Becky and Rhonda and we're in that stage where you moving away from the Rhonda and, and the Becky and the Charlotte and you giving other people the run. And I'm not mad that other people have the run like Bailey. I just think WWE needs to give her a substantial dance partner on SmackDown and they're trying to do it with Alexa Bliss and I hope they put on a great match at the Extreme Rules uh, pay-per-view there, which is coming up here in a ne- in a couple of weeks. And then we moved on, man. We moved on to Kofi Kingston and Samoa Joe in the ring, man. Samoa so Joe's mic skills are tremendous. Joe, yeah. Joe Joe's mic yeah. skills are tremendous. I mean, he he can put butts in seats. And now we, we say it here all the time. If Roman had Joe mic skills, Roman would be a mega star. Mm, wow, I never thought about that. Y'all, you sure y'all say that on here? I never heard that. This is the first time I've uh, heard you say that. Nah, you be missing for a while, man. You be missing. Me okay, all right. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, but we said if, Joe, <laughs> if, if, if Roman had Mike, if Roman had some more Joe's my skills, man, it would be lights out. But Joe has some my skills to put butts in season. I like the fact that that Kofi cut a promo, cut promos tonight. And at the end of that, we saw the middle finger, dude. Yeah, well, listen, they know they got to crank up the edge a little bit more because uh, they got people that are looking for that type of wrestling and that type of entertainment that's not PG. Yeah, man, that that's to me was like, wow, Kofi actually did the middle finger and they didn't block it out. They didn't do nothing to stop it from being seen. It was like, okay, 
okay, WWE, keep getting a little, uh, as some people would say, going back to the Attitude Era. You know, mm-hmm. I don't think they're going that far back, but I do think uh, that they are getting more, um, what's the word, risque, per se. They're getting uh, a little yeah, bit less, more, less, yeah. less yeah, PG, more less edgy. Corny, man. Yeah, you get wow. bringing more of the realism back. I think that's what makes AEW so good. Um, I can say the name here. We'll get to that in a minute too. I can say the name here, AEW. Mm-hmm. Um, they're making AEW, you know, doing their thing with boy, you're talking about AEW Fighter Fest. We we'll get to that in a minute. Um, yeah. But you know, WWE has to change some things, and I think with Bischoff in charge of SmackDown and Paul Heyman in charge of Monday Night Raw, we'll see continue to see stuff like that as it continues to move on. Uh, in WWE, but it was good to see Kofi go back one on one with Joe. I still think Joe Joe threatened his family a little bit and, and talked about his kids and talked about Kofi, you know, showboating his kids or parading his kids around and and getting them to sell merchandise and and after he won the title and that no one cares about him. But Kofi Kofi got the last laugh with the Trouble in Paradise, leaving Samoa Joe laying in the middle of the ring. And then they had a match, Apollo Crews taking on Andrade. Look, Selena Vega, man, that, a beautiful woman right there. I'll, that's all, I'm going to leave that right there. Uh, but Andrade's taking on Apollo Crews. It's just good to see Apollo Crews back on TV doing something relevant. Uh, he's in a feud with Andrade, who we know that personally has gone through a lot, uh, losing his mom, his aunt was sick. Uh, good to see him back on TV as well. And he picks up the win over Apollo Crews. I don't know what WWE can do with Apollo Crews. Champ, man, you was a high fan of Apollo Crews when he first came to the WWE. You know, what, where did they go wrong with yeah. him? Yeah. Well, uh, I liked him when he was Uha Nation, and I really would hope that they would have kept that name. Uh, the Apollo Crews, part Apollo Creed, part Terry Crews, I get it. Um, but when he came up and he got to the roster, where did they go wrong? Um, I, I don't even know where to begin, man. I mean, the guy can go. I mean, if you look at his skill set for a guy that size, he's close. I guess you would say if you want to look at Ricochet as the innovator of aerial offense and what he can do, you know, uh, in the high flying sector, you got him, you got AJ, you know, um, I'm not really even going to count Lucha Party because you keep them down there with the uh, with the 205 guys or, you know, the smaller guys. But Apollo Crews can go, man. He can he, – there's a lot he can do. And I don't think they've fully tapped into his in-ring ability. And the only time that kind of, like, highlighted is if it's in the midst of a really great feud. And, unfortunately, he hasn't had one yet. Yeah, that's, the, that's really the unfortunate thing because he hadn't had any great feuds. Uh, as of yet, and that's I think that's one of the biggest problems with him. They haven't had anything significant. Uh, when he first came, he had you know a little IC feud and stuff like that, but they never got him to that next level. Then him and Titus, you know, you might have thought at one time would win the uh, tag team titles, but they never pulled the trigger on that. I mean, I think the guy, as you said, when when we were looking at him on the Indies at Uha Nation, he was good. Yeah. He, he was good, and I, and I want to say he's a product of what WWE has watered him down, oh, per se. But Uha Nation was good. Well, let's move move on, man. We, uh, he, but uh, back to Adrati. Adrati picking up a win, which I'd like to see him do much more uh, in the WWE and who WWE does much more with him if he continues to stay healthy, if he continues to stay where he's at and all the family issues and stuff stop. Because I think this guy could be a great U.S. champ, a great intercontinental champ. And WWE has to do something with him, uh, moving moving forward. Has to do something moving moving forward with him. Then we get to yeah. Mandy Rose taking on Ember Moon. Um, t- I don't know. It seemed like ever since Ember Moon has came back from an injury and she, you know, she was hurt. WWE is looking for something. I think she could be. When I talked about earlier in the segment, I thought she could be. She could be that person to go against Bailey. I don't know why Ember Moon has to be a, a face right now. Ember Moon, in my opinion, could definitely be a good heel. If the WWE does it right, you know they they need a, they need a heel, and I think Ember Moon could be that, be that heel against a Bailey. Make Ember Moon a heel, please, or develop Mandy Rose a little bit more. But I think Ember Moon taking on Bailey would be a great thing. Your thought, champ? Um, uh, I I just really think that they need to kind of like, I, I don't like the gimmick, 
I don't like the, the script. I don't like the delivery of the words on the script. I, 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 we, we know her per se, you know, she's been a, on the show uh, a couple of times, but I mean, I'm just not feeling like the direction. I mean, can she go another situation? Same thing that I said before. Can she go? Yes. Is she good in the ring? Uh, proficient? You know, she makes sure she takes care of, uh, of the fellow performer. Yes. You know, like she checks all the boxes, but for whatever reason, um, you know, it could be a timing thing. Maybe it's just not her time. And like you said, she is coming back. So I really can't, you know, kind of like throw out a verdict on there. And, and I think it may be a situation where she needs a little bit more time. But going back to Apollo Crews, he's had a lot of time, man. And, you know, it, it's one of those things where if you can't get to that top tier and break through that top tier after a certain amount of time, um, I mean, you, you got to just start looking at a few things. And, and maybe maybe him going to 205 Live, maybe that might help. You know what I mean? Like yeah, maybe but... him going back down to NXT, maybe that'll help. I don't know. But on this roster now, where you got look, you're on a roster <clears throat> where Shinsuke and Rusev are not on television. Right? Not unless unless there was anything that I might have fast forward through. I haven't seen Shinsuke and Avenue. Yeah. Well, Shinsuke's got a match coming up with Finn Balor at Extreme Rules. So he will be going for the IC title. Uh, at Extreme Rules, so they introduced that last wait, week on SmackDown. But wait, ha- did he have a match, or was it just a segment? It was a segment. It was just a segment. Okay, so they're bas- okay, so they're pulling this segment from you know wherever they're pulling it from, and is this tough for Shinsuke to get a match on television? You know, you gotta it, rebuild it, Shinsuke, it, man. Shinsuke was yeah. hot a couple years ago. Now Shinsuke had has fallen off. When Shinsuke had the U.S. title. It wasn't what it needed to be. He tagged him with Rusev. That didn't work out. They just didn't know where to go with Shinsuke after the AJ Styles feud. And after he feuded with AJ Styles and they didn't pull the trigger on Lyle and Shinsuke uh, win the title. Think about it. Shinsuke won the Royal Rumble. He yeah. won the Royal Rumble. Went to WrestleMania and wrestled AJ Styles at WrestleMania. Did but not that, win. But that's not on him. That's on them. Yeah, that's on That's on them. And he just it just didn't pan out. It didn't look where they needed to look and, and Shinsuke just fell to the bottom. And that's when everybody thought Shinsuke was going to go to AEW, but he re-signs with WWE and now he's in a Intercontinental title mix. You know, who says? I guess yeah. when you I guess when you renew your co- contract and when you negotiate your contract, you can go ahead and say, you know what, I'll sign here if you allow me to get an IC title shot or a world title shot or whatever the case may be. But Shinsuke is one of those other guys that people would like to see uh, move and go to another level. You know, yeah. they went to the main event of the night where you had Kevin Owens and um, Dolph Ziggler taking on Heavy Machinery. A uh, winner gets inserted into the triple threat match for the tag team titles. And believe it or not, Heavy Machinery win- wins. And I'm starting to like Heavy Machinery. At first, I like man these two guys, Tucker and Otis. I don't know, but the Calipedal is starting to 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 gain on me a little bit. They're entertain. They're actually entertaining. Yeah. They yeah, act- which one is the one that do, do, do the um, – it's not Otis, is it? Yeah, it's Otis. Uh, the one that does the little – The Calipedal? Yeah, yeah, Otis does the Calipedal. Yeah. Okay, Otis is everything that ZZ should have been, i tell you. And, but as we said, ZZ has no work ethic whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> ZZ, ha- ZZ has no work ethic whatsoever when it comes to, you know, whatever – he just has no work ethic. I'm going to put it like that way. None. None whatsoever. So, it, it, it's nothing going for ZZ uh, when it comes to work ethic. You know, and that's that's one of the things. That, I mean, I think Heavy Machinery has the opportunity to be very successful in the WWE. I mean, with the SmackDown titles, I think it would be interesting for them to grab the SmackDown titles. I think it would be uh, over Daniel Bryan in... Rowan, I can see it happening. I can definitely see okay. it, it happening. But I want to get something to happen last night. We we talked about this in our group chat. Uh, and we definitely talked about this in our group chat last night. And that was the incident on Twitter, or what, on Instagram, uh, where I'm going to say intern, because I can't see somebody with the, the, that has, that's there every week or they're making this mistake with WWE puts the AEW words uh, in the Street Profits uh, uh, in the Instagram with the street profits saying they're coming to Monday Night oh, Raw, man. Oh, boy. 
this this was bad. I just didn't. I don't know. It got bad. <laughs> it got bad real quick for WWE. And I hope this guy, oh girl, uh, didn't lose their job behind it. Keith, would you fire him? I would. Uh, yeah, or I would just remove it because, like, okay, so it's obvious that you're using a phone when you're doing this, right? So sometimes your auto text, you know, and the words that you, the keywords that you use, whatever the words that are familiar to your phone pop up. So maybe they went to put R, AEW popped up, which means that they're texting about AEW, which is even more significant about the fact that whoever's working it put that in there and then it got posted. Yeah. That's, yeah. You know, so this girl or guy made this big mistake here. Uh, Street Profits, though, do you like the fact they'd be maybe on Monday Night Raw or will be on Monday Night Raw? Have this tag team grow? Uh, yeah, well, not, they haven't grown on me yet. I, I want to see them because it's one thing to see talent on NXT. It's another thing to see them make the transition to uh, the, the the main show. So I won't say that they've grown on me yet. I'm I'm grateful. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm um I'm happy to see that they're grateful and they're not taking it uh, for granted that they're gonna go out there and they're gonna do their best that they're going to put their best foot forward. But at the end of the day, like they always say, it's all about the matchups and it's all about getting that moment to, to, to capture that brass ring. And here they are in a position to do so, and I hope that they do. Yeah, I definitely hope the Street Profits definitely do that. Other thing we want to talk about, man, is Seth Rollins. You said it last week, champ, that Seth Rollins, when he was treating back and forth with Will Offspray, as I called him last week, Will Off Spring, uh, you know, because he'd be jumping all over the place. But nonetheless, uh, he finally he – Seth Rollins apologizes, man. You know, yeah. Seth Rollins apologizes to, to Will Off Spray. And, man, it was shocking when I saw this. Yeah. You said it You said it was yeah. the Seth Rollins that was talking, so that it was the – I don't yeah. know, the enemy, you know. It, it could have been – look, I, who knows. You know, the fact that he – uh came out there, apologized, and, you know, he, he said what he had to say uh, in terms of, like, talking about it's about the love and not the money, which is the kind of guy that Seth always struck me to be. You know, I think that um, it was great for him to do that, and as a gesture, a uh, peace offering, he's going to take Will to Nando's, what have you. So all is well in the indie world, in the, in the WWE world. So, I mean, I think it's cool that he – it was big of him and classy of him to do that. Yeah, it was big of him and classy of him. I think, he you know, he realized – he said, as he said on his tweet, I took a few days and, and to sit down and think about it, you know, like, dang, that I, that's not even lying with my values. I don't even talk about money, you know. I don't talk about stuff like that. And that's not who I am. And he said he knew once he hit the send button uh, that was something was wrong. And it is very classy for uh, Seth Rollins to apologize uh, to Will Offspray about that. Man – Hey, so you saw Fighter Fest over the weekend, all right? Your thoughts on that? Did you like okay. any match on the card? Your thoughts on Fighter Fest? Uh, Fighter Fest, it was free, and it wasn't boring. So you put those two things together. Yes, I enjoyed it. It was just free, and it's not boring. It's fine. I like the fact that they do a great job. You know, um, AEW does a great job in making their events feel like a party where it just so happens that a wrestling ring is there. And what I looked at and what I, the vibe that I got off of, you know, watching on my television was that, yes, they are at the CEO gaming event, which is a, a esports fighting game um, tournament, what have you. And those fans were shuttled in and you knew something else was going on. And it just like, it felt like the, the wrestling was there for the sidebar entertainment, but then it started to get really, really good. And then everyone started really getting engaged in it, that it turned in to more than what it was supposed to be. And they just do a great job with that. I really, really enjoyed it, man, um, from top to bottom. Uh, I didn't watch the pre-show. I just came in, you know, during the start of the pay-per-view. And once again, they're doing everything right. You know, that, that uh, main event match was great. Uh, you know, there was maybe a couple of bot spots throughout the night, but they did it. You know, you're never going to have a perfect show but it was perfect for what it needed to be. And uh, one more in the books for them as they march towards the TV program in the fall. Yeah, they got one more in the books, man. They got two more. You got um, Fight for the Fallen, which is coming up on July 13th. You have that one coming up, which is 
you know, a lot going on that weekend. You have Evolve, and then you have Next Night at Extreme Rules that weekend. You had WWE SmackDown Show, which is beat down in at Virginia State University uh, in Virginia. So you got a lot going on next weekend when it comes to World of Professional Wrestling. Uh, Fighter Fest, I thought it was a great show. I thought all the matches on the card was pretty good. I liked the way how they mix it with gaming, the two communities coming together. Um, I liked how... Um, Kenny Omega was able to get a little get back on Dean Ambrose of uh, the match mm-hmm. between Dean, uh, excuse me, not Dean, John Moxley. Let me call him by the right name now. John, how John Moxley and uh, Joey Janela put on a good gracious talking about talking about thumbtacks and, and trash cans and oh, talking about an unsanctioned match with that match right there would be a very good match and for a guy who was in WWE to come back to his roots per se and do that. Hey, my hat's off to John Moxie because for all that we know it's not about the money. Definitely know no. it's <laughs> no. definitely know it's not a, not about the money, but it's a, for the love of the sport, uh, which is good there. So I thought Fighter Fest was good, um, and I'm looking forward to see how this thing works, man. I'm, I'm I just like the fact that pro wrestling right now is at another level. Pro wrestling is at another level, so it's it's, it's going to get better and better from here. Hey, before we get out of here, um, on a scale of you know, one to ten. How would you give them rate rate Monday Night Raw, rate SmackDown? Uh, I think um, on a scale of one to ten, I'll give SmackDown a six. I'll give them both a six and a half, man. I mean, I wasn't thoroughly. No, actually, let me take that back. What I'll do is I'll give Raw a seven, and I'll give SmackDown a six and a half. Uh, I wasn't too enthused with with SmackDown, but Raw had a bunch of segments that I thought was cool. Uh, I really hope Bray Wyatt comes back sooner rather than later because I was slightly disappointed when I didn't see the Firefly Funhouse segment. Yeah, I, I, I get, yeah, I was, I was disappointed as well. Haven't seen that, didn't see that last week, which was very disappointing. We still haven't seen Alistair Black debut on SmackDown. Um, if I had to get both of them, you know, I give Raw a, about 7.5, uh, close to an 8. Uh, just for the fact it kept me entertained for three hours, and and that's been hard to do for a long time. There had been some matches where I would just, you know, do something full clothes or do whatever case may be, but it kept me entertained. SmackDown, to me, the two-hour concept of SmackDown, it moved along very well the night. They just give me a little bit more matches, uh, and I'm happy that he- somebody else was in the main ar- main event. Heavy Machinery was in the main event, other than us seeing the same type of main event over and over again so it was good yeah. there and I love the fact that Kofi and Joe was able to cut a promo in the ring and we able to start to see the other side of Kofi Kingston which is always a good thing hey ladies and gentlemen that's it for our show tonight make sure uh, make sure you go to iTunes and subscribe to us uh, leave a five star review uh, make sure you leave some stars there as well leave a comment uh, in the comment section also go to YouTube hit the subscribe button the bell notification so you never miss any of our shows if you're watching us on Facebook Facebook live make sure you leave a comment in the comment section section on Facebook live anything that we talked about tonight hey leave us leave us your thoughts leave us your opinions hey it's good to be here talking wrestling and once again we're gonna start doing this more often uh, of streaming on Facebook and YouTube and that number 804-403-7555 is a number that you can call in when we do our shows and talk to us we want to hear your questions we want to hear from you uh, ladies and gentlemen just make sure you continue to watch wrestling and be a wrestling fan and as the wizard would say if you're not confirmed consider yourself denied ladies and gentlemen end of story good night and we'll catch you guys next week make sure you have a great 4th of July and don't pop any firecrackers in your hands ladies and gentlemen good night